Welcome back and happy Saturday, Squirrel Nation. Today we are going to dive into my own personal Jinar gameplay. Uh, the main focus for today's video is how to use pings and quick chat to better communicate with your team. Um, this is my Jinar build that I generally use. Um, I do make updates to it throughout the game depending on what happens. But anyways, the arcana I use are uh, Violate, Benevolence, and Flurry. If I had Devour, I would probably try it out instead of Benevolence, but I don't. I'm, I'm poor on gold, so... Anyways, uh, the build Phoenix tier for um, early game sustain, so every time I level I'm getting mana and health back. Then I go into the Gilded Greaves, because I want the magic resistance against other mid laners. Uh, Rhea's... Uh, the reason I don't finish the orb is I personally don't like it. I think that Jinnar is a very power spike mid-game hero. As soon as Jinnar gets his ult, he becomes very strong. Um, he consistently stays strong, but once everybody's at max level and max builds, he does fall off in my opinion. So I don't want to have to wait uh, for orb to basically give me the give me what I paid for. So the whole benefit of the Orb of the Magi is that you you keep stacking up and eventually it becomes a very uh, worthwhile item. So the problem for me is that means that I'm going a very long time in the game, maybe around the 10 minute mark until I'm getting my Reyes and I have no lifesteal. So to me, I go straight into the Reyes as the third item um, because I want to get that lifesteal and I want to just really take advantage of Jinnar's power spike. Um, then I go into Burst because there's a lot of Assassins currently in the meta. Uh, this helps me sustain their initial, or this helps me live through their initial Burst, and then I can life steal back with my ultimate, and I almost always beat Assassins unless they're significantly ahead of me. Uh, Soaring Aura, I will change out for Staff of Null if the enemy is building a lot of magic resistance. Uh, it's very uncommon that they do that, though, to be honest. I almost always end up with uh, so using Soaring Aura because as Jinnar, my philosophy is I'm here to kill your squishies. Um, your front line, I'm not really concerned with. Like, I'm glad if I can be on the front line and I can be on the squishies because then my life stealing is just going crazy. But honestly, my target's the squishies. Most squishies are never really going to build more than 300 magic resistance. Um, so that's why I prefer Soaring Aura, and then also it gives me that thousand health, which lets me stay alive and keep life stealing, keep life stealing. Um, there's a lot of times with Jinnar that I come back into fights, and so I have multiple, multiple ultimates throughout a fight, so I might actually end up regening my entire health pool, uh, maybe two times during a team fight. Um, anyways, after that, Hectate is my last item just to scale up my AP, um, and anyways, that is it. Let's dive into the play. So starting off, um, basically just getting to lane. I was looking in the, around in the bushes. I already had cleared the bush, plus Crest is over there checking Aram. Right now I'm trying to angle so that um, the Vera cannot hit me with her skill with my minions. And same thing, I'm trying to get it so that I can hit her when I hit the minions. So we're just doing that dance. I'm following my support. My support's doing awesome. Going to check the blue buff, which I would love to do. Um, their Aram's also doing good, so she's the, so both the supports are starting the way they should. Now it's just kind of becoming a poke battle. Um, notice keeping distance. I'm trying to stay in bushes as much as possible. I thought Vera would throw an ability into the bush. She didn't, but it's always better safe than sorry. Same thing, just staying out just outside her range. If you notice, her skill shot didn't hit me. Um, I am trying to hit her with ball the my uh, S1. But anyway, so I decided to clear and go bottom because I noticed it's looking favorable. Our jungle is down there, our support is down there, they're pushing in. So pinging, like we talked about, I pinged rally, so the team starts to look. Then I ping attack when I get close enough to actually do something. Um, here I'm trying to cut off Val, exactly, I stop auto-attacking, and we get first blood because of that. So notice on that, the just use a ping, right? You're just trying to make your team aware. Same thing. Um... I tend to use Rally when I just want to, my team to gather up at something or I see some objective, and I normally use Attack when I want to attack the objective or I want my uh, team to engage. So anyways, I get back to mid, I lose one CSS, or CS I believe, yeah, so, or actually I lost two minions, but it's totally worth it. At this point we got uh, multiple kills and we even got the tower. So anyways, my focus is switching over to Dragon. I love it. The support in the jungler over there doing it. My idea is I'm going to clear this wave. 
I did start to go over there. The reason I didn't is I saw Vera, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to push this in. Um, we've been talking about evaluating the enemy team and the enemy players, so I can tell the enemy Vera is not that skilled. She's not... Um, she is probably one of the weaker players on their team. Like, I'm definitely... I can definitely bully her throughout the game and take advantage of her. Let's put it that way. Anyways, I see Spirit Sentinel coming. So I ping. Um, I ping to tell N Nakroth that I'm on the way and just, you know, wait for me. I see Val. That's a very important thing is if you notice, I'm always taking the angle that gets me away from the enemy as quick as possible. So I saw Val coming in from the right, and then so I went to the left, but not just to the left, but at the left from the angle. So, same thing there, that's good. I kind of waited a little bit to evaluate the situation. I was looking at the minimap where people. That's why I'm pinging retreat to crest, and this death is my fault. I was pinging retreat to crest after we got that kill because I was looking at the minimap. I saw um, our our Violet, our Nakroth, our Malak were all different parts of the map and they weren't coming. Uh, they still needed more time to get there. Um, so that's why I was pinging retreat. I shouldn't have went back. I should have just let Crest die, but the mistake. Anyways, um, Nakaroth's doing good. You'll notice throughout the game, Nakaroth tends to not be very objective focused. So we have a lot of pings going on about that. So Crest says, attack the dragon. So I ping, or quick chat, hang on, I'm on the way just to let them know, okay, I'm following your call. I, I do intend to come help. So I see the fight. If you notice, I'm swiping over to check the health and everything. I'm kind of checking the positioning. I do want to push that wave in if possible. And I'm also waiting for a good opportunity. Bam, find a great opportunity. One person low, and I get on both the squishies. Um, remember, I said, uh, getting the enemy team's front line and their support is fine with me. But I'm really waiting for opportunities to jump on their back line, on their squishies, on their carries. Their carry in this case is the Slims. Valheim and Vera to me, right? And I've already talked about, I'm really not worried about Vera in this case. She, I can just tell that she's she's not a super great player. Um, and that's nothing against Vera. I'm not saying that to like pick on Vera. It's just for the ELO that we're at, you can tell that she is on the weaker side of that ELO. Um, anyways, so you'll notice throughout the game that I hop on squishies when I can. Another thing throughout this game that you'll notice is you don't need to dive into a fight as soon as it happens, even if you're there, right? There's a lot of times in this game that I wait. I'm waiting because I'm trying to time out. I want to get the most benefit. I want to have the most impact, right? And also, I'm the other reason I'm delaying is not only does it let me get the most impact, it also lets me evaluate the map. It lets me look at the mini map. It lets me look at my team's health. Um, here, notice I'm going to cut off uh, Vera's retreat. Bam, because I want to funnel her back into my team. Look, she has to run back into my team. She doesn't run back into my team, she's going to die. Uh, our Nakroth, I thought, would have got her in, with the Malik, but anyways, Nakroth does chase and secure the kill. Um, so anyways, so I'm using my ult there to zone. I'm trying to limit uh, their choices. Um, here, I don't have my ultimate. Uh, I really don't want to dive into their team without my ultimate. I, You notice I've been pinging retreat because I don't want my team to go in. I now have lifesteal. Now I'm like, okay, cool, let's take this fight. No no problem. Right, so I see him. Uh, I, my flash is a little poor. I was, uh, I w would have, yeah. Either way, I mean, we, we secure the Aram. The flash was a little, I, I couldn't improve that, but we still got what we wanted out of that. Same thing here. I'm just going to kind of help zone, put pressure forward so that um, Violet can get that. And then I'm telling Violet, retreat, retreat. If you notice throughout the game with the pinging, I try to ping with whatever my intention is. If my intention is to disengage, I ping retreat. If my intention is to group, I try to ping rally. Right here, I'm saying, telling Crest to retreat, don't, don't leech this. Let me grab this gold, right? Let me get these lost hits. And if you notice, Crest responded. He went, he tried to get away. He didn't get away quick enough, but he did let me last hit. So I just got 30% more gold for three different minions because I ping retreat and the crest listened. Are your teammates always going to listen? No, they're not. But there are games where you're going to have teammates who do respond very well to pinging. Um, that's why I wanted to show you guys this game. This game is a great example of I think my team did so well because we pinged. We, If you notice, the whole team's pinging. The whole team's sending different messages throughout this time. We're kind of saying, oh, we want to try this. Oh, we want to try that. And then we, we try to watch each other. Um, so anyways, here, once again, we're fighting around Dragon, it's up, right, four of us are here. Right now, my concern is our uh, jungler is top, 
So, like I said, uh, our Nakroth was very... He, he didn't focus on objectives that much. Um, so here we go. Um, our tanks are going in. I'm going to evaluate the health. Okay, nobody's like super low. Same thing. I'm kind of trying to look. Okay, squishies, right? Um, I did see that our Nakroth was coming over. So I did engage. This engage is questionable. I, I should have probably waited about five more seconds and it would have been great because... I, I rushed it so Nakroth wasn't quite there. If I would have waited maybe like three to five more seconds, Nakroth would have been there to dive on the squishies right as I scared them back with my ultimate. And then that would have been much that, that would have went much better. So intention was there. I saw squishies I could get on. Um, I did, but I should have waited a little bit longer. So, anyways, team's pulling back out. Um, I'm gonna start evaluating if you notice where I'm, I'm trying to look at my items when I'm dead I'm trying to look at gold levels. Okay, I'm looking at resistances like we talked about It's around this time that I'm about to finish my uh, burst agony, which means I'm gonna go into my uh, Magic pen item, so I'm trying to decide okay What magic pen item should I be going into if you notice the enemy team doesn't have anybody with significant amount of magic pen So I am deciding to stick with Soriara Unfortunately, we lose that dragon. Um, once again, if you notice, the jungler just, he just really didn't care about objectives for some reason. Um, I am, our team did do a good job of covering down. Unfortunately, that's a time where Punish would have secured that dragon for us, but we lost it. Um, and honestly, there, I could have went instead of clearing the lane. The lane wasn't being pushed, so it was frozen. Um, and I got greedy. I could have come and zone back uh, the Aram and the Lubu, but I, yeah, yeah, that's kind of a, th th those are tough choices. I see Vera and everything, I'm not going to face check her, she, I'm going to get stunned and get blown up. I'm creating map pressure, right? So everybody's having a standoff in the jungle, if you notice. So what I what do I do? I start, okay, fine, I'm going to chip away at your tower. And as soon as I chip away at the tower, then the enemies realize, okay, we have to, we, we have to get on the tower, right? It, it, it forces them to do something. And I cut back here to because you notice Violet got stunned, so you need to make space. And I started to cut back. I was going to do a zoning alt, but then Crash did, so that's awesome. I don't need to blow my alt, and we all disengage safely. Um, so at this point, you like we've been talking about uh, in a lot of the videos, adapting to your teammates. So at this point, I or just adapting in general. So I know the enemy team Vera is weak, so I'm more concerned about Slims and Val. I know that my jungle is very... Um, focused on farming and very much not focused on taking objectives, right? So at this point, I'm kind of like, okay, I'm just going to keep farming up, farming up. I'm going to try to get to max level, get to my max build as quick as I can um, to, to press these towers more. So another thing about uh, just kind of the overall landscape of this game, right? Um, Violet will be able to carry a, in this win condition. Violet, I know, is a super strong carry late in the game. Our Violet is good, right? At this point, I've determined my Violet is a good player. So my plan at this point was, okay, I'm going to be carry the game until my Violet kicks in, and if, at that point, if the enemies over-adapt to me, if they build up too much magic resistance, if they put too much focus in avoiding the damage coming from me, then my Violet's going to just wipe the floor with them. At this point, I'm trying to set up an ambush. You'll notice me pinging, right? Rally, rally. I want my team to get in this bush because we're... Bottom's pushed in, mid is pushing in, and top was pushing in. The enemies are going to have to rotate between uh, top and mid, so I'm trying to create pressure. I'm checking here because I wasn't sure uh, if the tanks did have aggro. They didn't, so that's why I back back out, and then I go back in. Same, I see my teams, we just had a wave coming. If you notice, we saw minions. So I'm just making space. I know my limits on Jinnar. I'm going to be aggressive. I, I know that I can get away with this, and I do get away with it. Uh, the enemies do chase me a little bit. Uh, Lubu ends up going down. So we end up with a, a three kills for two, zoning alt right here. Bam, that's exactly what I was trying to do that last time with Crest, but Crest went, so I didn't need to do that. But anyways, with Jinnar, don't be shy about your alt. There's no reason to be shy about your ult. If you notice, it's, it was only, what, like 13 second cooldown after I used it. So it's not a big deal to use it. Um, especially if it keeps your your win condition alive, right? I said, as Jinnar, I want to stay ahead. I want to let my Violet farm to get to her super late game. And so she can just destroy the enemy team. And, you know, two shot towers. 
So I see my team up there. I know that's a bad fight. I scroll just because I want to look at the enemy's health. I see that, yes, they are in fact high on health. They're going to die. I'm not even going to bother, right? I'm just, like I said, farm, 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 get to my max build as much as I can. Um, a lot of times I try to team fight when I can. If I know that I'm not going to make it there, then I focus on farming, right? And if I'm going to farm, I'm going to farm as best I can. The reason I go for the vision seagull here right away is I want to have vision of the enemy rotations through their jungle, right? So you see Slim's right now bottom, and I know we're going to be, my team's going to be focusing on pushing in lanes, so the enemies have to rotate through their, their blue side jungle. So that's why, to me, I love getting that vision seagull. So now you see two, three mid, um, that seagull's going through, right? We're not seeing anything come through there. So it just gives me a better idea that, okay, that's most likely means the enemies are rotating top. So then I know, okay, I need to rotate top. Also, our jungler hadn't been doing objections, all of a sudden he decides to just uh, no ping, no nothing, go for a uh, Dark Slayer, which is interesting. But I'm going to pause. Only pause I'm going to do in this video. The reason why this fight is extremely important, and I want to kind of preface it. If you notice that the... Enemy squishies have set up on the other side of Dark Slayer. They're up this this way in the fight. And the enemy frontliner here, the Lubu and the Aram. Aram has been trying to get on me. She's been trying to like save her ult for me. I already know that. Also, I think Jinar is a terrible target because as soon as I ult, if, she, if an Aram ults me after I've already ulted, she's really doing nothing to me. But anyways, so I see the crest, right? He's going to run in. And their team at this point, I know they're trying to hold cooldowns, right? But they're going to have to start using them because our Malik and everybody are getting low. They're going to start using them. And then so my plan right now is I'm going to let the Crest get in there. And then I'm going to just beeline straight to the back line. Um, I'm going to flash to try to dodge the uh, Aram from ulting me before I'm on her squishies. If she ults me when I'm on her squishies, I'm fine with that. Because, once again, Jinnar, my whole focus is I just want to melt the back line. So, anyways, let's watch this happen. Um, bam, get in there, get on them. And she did ult me before I got the, um, my, my flash came, so that, that's whatever. But now I have it, I'm aiming my flash in case she gets back on me, she doesn't. So, we're good. So, uh, great team fight for us there. Um, my objectives hit, right? I, I got what I wanted out of that. They're pushing mid, that's good. I'm gonna go back. I'm not gonna risk anything. Um, unfortunately here this that the the crest and violet just got outplayed, but I mean that 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 happens, unfortunately. So, anyways, okay, team's going down. So I'm looking at everything. Violet's starting to get fed. Great, right? Our Nakaroth has been farming like crazy, so he's fed, but honestly, he's not a player. The way he's been going so far, I'm not wanting to count on him to carry the game, right? He's been kind of ignoring objectives and doing his own thing the whole game, so he's not really a player that I, I want to rely on to win this game for me. So anyway, so, but I am happy Violet's getting there. I'm going full build. Um, I'm deciding my last item. Um, I like to go uh, Holy of Hollies uh, towards the end game. This game I know is kind of going late because we, we are having issue getting high ground towers. So... My plan is just to get to my max build and just do as much damage to their team as I can. Um, the thing that's really good about Jinnar for mass damage is you can just put out so much AoE damage, right? And the good thing about that is even if you don't get a kill, it makes it very easy for your team to come and clean up, right? So my plan at this point is because I'm so fed and i'm just ahead and here i right boom i see squish i see slims dude he's priority target go for it right i don't care if i die and also i i got the vera and the slims if you notice and aram same thing she ulted me after i already ulted so you know have fun you you killed me but i just got both your squishies and you went down also so and 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 this is what i mean so as jinnar i'm okay if i die actually be as long as I get heavy damage on multiple enemy teammates because then my assassin Nakroth can come in, my Violet can come in, and they can just feed themselves even more on all these kills. So at that point, I'm happy. Um, if you notice, the last time I didn't uh, just sell my tier. I didn't sell my tier until I have enough money to buy something that gives me better stats than it. So the tier, I believe it is, gives you 60 AP, whereas the scroll that I just bought gives 120. So I'm not going to, and also I'm max level now, so the tier's uh, passive becomes uh, useless, I guess, yeah. Unimportant. So 
Anyways, I want to do Dark Slayer. We're having issues with um, getting high ground towers, right? Thankfully, we did get the mid one, which was awesome. Um, but right now, I'm just like, okay, I want to get that. I'm not really worried about the dragon. Dragon is a team fight buff, and our team fights, we, we've been dominating the team fights. I'm really not worried about them. I just want to get these towers, so let's get that. Um, unfortunately, our team it, here, things are splitting. I'm pinging notice retreat, don't overextend, because I see Crest and Violet like doing something around dragon and the enemies kind of collapsing in on them um thankfully they don't they don't get caught and yeah, that goes our way um the valheim we get him um and this is just going to snowball the game a bit more so we get that they're slowing same thing now i'm thinking in my head slims right once again vera i'm not that worried about slims is my priority target um i'm just kind of looking around for him if you notice i was uh, moving my camera to look around for him. I don't see him. I want my team to back up. We have Drake. I wish he would just drop Drake and grab this bottom tower over here or even the top tower. But I just want to clear these waves and go in for it. But anyways, we're... I, I don't know. My my team's standing in the middle with um, no, no waves. So I'm just trying to ping. And once again, we talked about your team's not always going to listen. I was pinging retreat there for, I don't know, 30 seconds. And, you know, people just didn't listen. But... That is what it is. So the reason I'm staying in this bush is Nakaroth and uh, Violet can easily kill the dragon. I'm just kind of peeking on it there. And I want to just dive into their team, honestly. I would love nothing more because to then to get a huge alt off on their team and then let my Nakaroth and Violet clean them up. That, that right now is my win condition in my head. I'm just sitting here like, okay, enemies, give me a chance to get huge damage on your team so that my assassin and my uh, marksman can just wipe you out. I don't know why our Violet went down here. I wish she would have stayed up here because we have Minion Wave, we have Drake, and and you're going to see, I want to go in on that, right? And I do get on the Val, I do get a decent amount of damage on the Slims and the Vera, and fortunately, uh, Violet does come over. If she would have been there originally, this probably would have, I wouldn't even have died, we would have got wiped wiped all the people that were trying to defend the bomb tower and gone. Um, the reason I dive there, if you notice, is their team wanted to clear the minion wave that was coming with the Drake. And we need the minion wave so that the tower takes more damage. If I die, that's not a big deal, to be honest, because our team's having so much issue killing towers. So to me, I'm happy to trade my life to get towers. These are the risks that become hard I, I think this is where as you move up the ranks calls become more kind of sketchy right and this is where passive players end up hurting themselves if you're too passive you can end up in these really really long drawn out games and you just lose the the longer a game goes on the more likely it is the enemy gets lucky on something and you end up losing the game right um so it is important to be aggressive like if you notice i did a few heavily aggressive plays. Some of them were bad, some of them were good, right? Um, that last one was definitely good. I saw the minion wave pushing up. We have Drake out. I want that high ground tower bad. My my win condition in my head has been get on a big chunk of enemies and like chunk them down before I die. I just got full build, right? I just got my six things. I just, I'm just i level 15. This is the strongest I will be as Jinnar compared to the enemy team ever in the game. From now on, their team is actually catching up to me in build. They're catching up to me in level, and I'm going to be getting weaker and weaker. So I need to push it. So that's why I dive in. Thankfully, my team did what I hoped they would do. They followed up. We got the kills. We got the tower, and we pushed it on from there to finish the game. Um, but anyways, and to kind of resummarize, the reason the pinging matters is if you watch throughout this game, the whole time I'm always pinging my intentions, pinging my intentions to just have a better chance of your team having good coordination. The team with better coordination will win. Pinging doesn't mean your team will always listen, but sometimes they will, and it just gives your team that edge and leads to wins. Um, the more, the better communication you have, the more aggressive you can be, the more plays that I can do. Um, finally, I hope you guys like today's content. If you did, please like and subscribe if you have not already. And as always, have an amazing day and happy ranking. Take care, and I'll see you tomorrow.